Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello, how are you? I am great and I'm excited for what we're talking about today. Tell us about it, Lane. Well, today we're going to be doing an early sunflower checklist. And if you don't know what that is, we will be going into detail about it in just a minute. But sunflowers are warm season tender annuals that conventionally would not be planted out until after any chance of frost has passed. But as we'll talk about today, with some additional protection and the right varieties, you might have success planting transplants out several weeks before your last expected frost date. Yeah. And we actually did an early sunflower experiment episode back in episode 28. That was a longer version, something that we went really in detail about these sunflower experiments. But this is going to be more like a checklist style so that you can just get right to the information you need to know about planting early sunflowers. Great. Let's get started. All right. So our first point is going to be recognize that there is some potential risk here when you're planting early sunflowers. Yes. So for anyone not familiar, Lisa, what are these early sunflowers we're talking about? And why is there a little bit of a risk when you're planting these? So the point is that we're trying to get sunflower blooms earlier than we normally would. And we've done it successfully for many years, um, planting them, actually planting transplants outdoors weeks before our last frost date with some protection. And so the risk is obvious. You know, if you get a ice storm or a snowstorm, although um, I have seen them take some really cold temperatures, I've not I've not experienced snow or an ice storm on the actual blooms, you know, on the buds, I guess we should say. Um, But that's the risk. But it is the return is so potentially high that it is so worth the actual risk to have sunflowers for Mother's Day. That's my personal goal. We needed focal flowers to go along with all of our cool flowers and to have sunflowers, which are beautiful and low investment, high return, just fit the bill. And so we figured it out and it's been incredibly successful. Yeah. So of course, when you're planting these, there's always a chance something will go wrong and you won't end up getting the flowers. But for many people, the potential reward, if they do work out, makes that gamble worth it. Yes. Okay. So our next consideration that we want to be thinking about is which varieties and colors do you want to be starting for these early sunflowers? There are some considerations with day length, days to maturity, and then also just in terms of the color palette of what you might want in those late spring, early summer bouquets. You know, that's a really great point. And some people aren't even aware that there are so many other colors to grow. Um, While for somebody that's not a flower farmer or not into flowers may look at this and say, it just looks like a sunflower to me. But in fact, um, the photo, and again, folks, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you might want to head over to our YouTube channel to see the beautiful slideshow that Lane has put together. This is Pro Cut Peach. So Pro Cut is the name of a variety, a series. And I I think it's 13 or 14 different colors come in this group. And so for me, when I am considering, what are my considerations when I'm trying to do this? First off, I love pro cuts because they're quick from seed to bloom, 55 to 60 days normally. Might take a little longer early in the season or late in the season, but that's a general marker. Um, And then also their day length neutral, as Lane mentioned, and that means that even when the day days are short, they will still develop a bud and grow. So um, pro cuts fit that bill. They're day length neutral um, and they're quick to seed. And then they offer all these different colors. The colors I'm thinking about, what do I want to go with all those soft spring colors that many of the cool flowers just tend to be? Um, And so this is Pro Cut White Light and White Night, which are at the top of my billing for spring. The peach and these two guys, along with um, lemon, are just the very best. And then, of course, my overall always favorite color is the Pro Cut Gold Light, which is the classic gold petals, but it has a chartreuse green center, so it goes with everything All of these five colors, I think that is, um, will go with any of the spring flowers and just complement them beautiful. And 
Um, so it has really revolutionized for a lot of people. We have people in Canada um, down to the South that are just making the most out of this practice because they're low investment, high return. And frankly, because the blooms do tend to be smaller this time of the year with a shorter, I mean, think about shorter days. They don't grow quite as much, right? So they tend to be a little bit smaller bloom. People don't even recognize them as sunflowers. They just think they're a long lasting, beautiful flower, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just really been remarkable, the results that people are getting. The white light and white night are just my absolute favorites. They're so pretty with those sort of buttercream colored petals. Oh. And one has a light center, one has a dark center. And it's a really good time of year to be growing these lighter colors as well, because there's not as much pest pressure. And exactly. that can be an issue on light colored sunflowers later in the season. You know, in fact, we pause growing the whites in the height of summer. I mean, first off, People are really looking for that classic. Again, thinking about when they're blooming, they're looking for that classic orange, petaled, dark-centered sunflower, and that works out great. So we pause whites and the lemons during summer and bring them back in the fall for that same reason, lower pest pressure. Yeah. So obviously the different colors you might want to consider, that's going to depend on your market or if you're a home gardener, just what are your personal preferences, but definitely make sure to consider if it's a day length neutral variety or something that will perform well under short day conditions, how many days to bloom. And then obviously, like I just mentioned, what colors you want to see at that time of year that they'll be blooming. Yeah. So it's, I mean, gold light, um, they're just really, really significant and the lemon is particularly useful in spring. Okay, our third item on the checklist is going to be determine your planting date and then sow your seeds indoors only about two to three weeks in advance of that date. Sunflowers are really fast growers. So Lisa, what is your target planting date in terms of transplanting these into the ground in relation to your last expected frost date? Sure, so I recommend to people to start the first time you're doing early birds, um, my goal was to get the transplants into the ground three weeks before my last historic spring frost. So for us, that was mid-April. So count back three weeks. So that would be the last week in March, right? We had three-week-old transplants ready to be planted into the garden. Um, and we're pushing the envelope a little bit more this year, but we know that that just brings greater risk. Sometimes these types of experiments they may, it's kind of like growing snaps into summer. It may work, but it, it may be, is it a good as quality? Is it really worth all the extra work? So we're trying to find out, can we get decent sized blooms with fairly little intervention from us other than hooping and covering them for the first few weeks of their life out in the garden? Um, so we're experimenting with that. So you'd be sowing your seeds around six weeks before your last expected spring frost and then transplanting them out about three weeks before your last expected spring frost. How does that differ from a typical warm season tender annual planting timeline? Boy, so people that some people are big believers that your last frost date, again, mine's mid-April, they even wait two weeks beyond that for to give the soil a time to warm up before they start planting warm season annuals. As flower farmers, we've always pushed the envelope. Again, we plant warm season right on that last date, but they're hooped and covered to protect from those spring winds and just the cool temperatures that can happen at night. Um, so we are getting sunflowers in the ground weeks and weeks before we normally would. And, you know, since I've started talking about this, it's very interesting that there are some people that only thought you could plant them in the heat of summer to have them late in the season. I mean, it's, it's really, I mean, we plant sunflowers 26 to 32 weeks out of the year in the field out in our garden. I mean, we start them indoors to plant transplants out in the field. So you can have sunflowers for a very long period of time for harvest. And this is the only warm season tender annual that you tend to do that with. These sunflowers tend to be a little hardier than a lot of other warm season plants. That's a great point. Yes. And so what happened for me, what made me try to figure this out is I noticed we grow a lot of um, 
branching sunflowers for the birds. We don't use branchers for cuts. And so because we leave them in the garden, they drop their seeds. And I started noticing after a few years that those seeds were germinating and growing up long before I thought they should. And it just made me understand that sunflowers are not cool season hardy annuals by any means, but they're more cold tolerant than we imagined. And when you plant a transplant outside, you really give them a lot of advantages. And I just wanted to mention too, sunflowers are pretty big seeds. We recommend using either a larger soil block, maybe something like the two inch soil blocks or 128 cell plug trays, which is what Lisa uses. And when you're starting them indoors, they do need to go under grow lights until they are hardening off outdoors. That's a question we get all the time. Yeah, they'll um, they'll be searching for light. As soon as we put them on the seedling heat mat and As soon as they come off the heat mat, if it is not warm enough for them to go outside directly in full sun, they've got to be under grow lights. That's a good point. Okay. And then for our last checklist item, I've lumped a bunch of things together here because they all kind of happen at a similar time frame. So you're going to need to harden these seedlings off, which you may be able to cheat a little bit on, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Check your weather forecast transplant, and then provide some sort of protection in the form of a lightweight row cover. So Lisa, can you talk about how you actually harden these seedlings off and why it's sometimes possible to cheat on that a little bit for these plantings? Sure. So during the season, when it's warm outside, I mean, once they sprout on the seedling heat mat, they go directly outside. They don't stop at the grow light process. Um, And so they're being hardened off from the get-go. Um, but this time of the year, um, you may need to um, actually, you know, you don't want to take tender plants straight from your grow room out into the cold conditions. However, we have found that because we're hooping and covering them, if you plant them on sunny, bright days and then you cover them up immediately, um, you can actually get away with doing the hardening off actually out in the garden. Because if you just put them out on a porch and it's pretty cold, um, you know, that's not going to be very, very helpful to the plant. So either protect them outdoors on a carport with row cover somehow, or just plant them out in the garden and hoop and cover them immediately. And what temperatures are you looking for if you're going to put them out on your carport and leave them out overnight even? I mean, you don't want anything because, I mean, I think they'll survive below 40 But why do you want to do that to them? Our whole point of doing this is to get flowers earlier, right? So you want to constantly be cuddling them a little bit. So if it's going below 50 or 55, for sure, you need to do something, you know, Um, because you don't want to shock them, stress them. You want to keep them growing. So that's what you're trying to provide. And we have an entire episode about hardening off in the carport Lisa's talking about, and that's in episode 26 if you want to go back and check that out. Is there a specific amount of time you aim to have them hardening off on your carport or do you just put them out there and then try to get them in the ground under row cover as quickly as possible? You know, the real bottom line is here as we're talking about this, it's like, why not just take them straight them out, straight out there and plant them and harden them off in the garden with the row cover and the hoops installed would be the simplest thing to do. Yeah. Um, you know, that just would kind of solve that whole problem, right? So then what are you looking at in terms of the weather forecast when you're going to actually transplant these outside? What are you looking for that's the signal that it's okay? Or conversely, what is the signal that you're going to back off and not put them out yet? Sure. So, I mean, if you're going to have a freak dip at night, you know, if it's going to be 26 degrees tonight, but then tomorrow night, it looks like the rest of the nights, it's not even going below 40. Obviously, we would hold off, you know, and and postpone. But in general... The whole point of this is to get them in the ground growing and giving them a little protection. Um, I have even been known to put a second layer of row cover on to give that added protection if I feel threatened, because we just want to get them in the ground. Again, we, when you are in your flower farmer, your production, it's like a freight train around here. There is no makeup time. There is no other time. It's like you do it when you have to do it. Or, oh, well, you missed that opportunity. So we just go for it. And after you've transplanted out, that lightweight row cover really is a critical part of these early sunflower plantings. Would you attempt this if you were someone like a home gardener and they know they're not going to be covering with row cover? What would you say about that? I mean, 
you can certainly try it, but that's just a high, I mean, that's like a one in 20, <laughs> you know, and it's just so easy. I mean, I found, when I discovered row cover, when I went from being a home gardener to a flower farmer 27 years ago, I thought to myself, it would have revolutionized my home garden to have row cover. I think that everybody benefits from having some row cover. And um, if you're going to do this process, why not just do the whole job? And do you follow your standard row cover up and down temperatures or do you do anything differently for these sunflower plantings? Good question. No, I leave them up all the time because you want it to get hot under there. I mean, sunflowers yeah. grow in the heat of summer. And when it's a bright, sunny day, even if it's like 30 degrees outside when the sun is shining, I'm thinking to myself, I bet it is like Jamaica underneath those, yeah. you know, underneath those row covers, which is exactly what those sunflowers are looking for. Yeah, it's great. What kind of weather would cause you to think about putting a double layer of row cover up? So once they start growing and get a little size to them, that's when they really start getting vulnerable. If the plants aren't touching the row cover and you're looking at 30 degrees or lower, you know, or even, you know, I mean, if you have it, why not do it? You know, you're trying to get, again, remember what the point is to get good quality flowers earlier to sell. So if you have row cover available and cold temperatures colder than what you're having day to day coming, put it on. But again, if the plants are touching the fabric, it may not work very well. I mean, that's when you have to start like, that's when you get in trouble. And how do you space these transplants? Is it the same as the sunflowers that will be coming in summer right behind them? Yes. Um, we put about five rows in a 30 inch wide bed and put six inches between plants in the row. Okay, well, that was it for this early sunflower episode. If you've done any early sunflower experiments, we would love to hear about them. You can either leave a comment over on YouTube or use the form linked in the show notes if you're listening in a podcast app. And we always appreciate your ratings and reviews in a podcast app or your likes and comments over on YouTube. And thank you so much for joining us again. So friends, remember that this podcast is made available to you by thegardenersworkshop.com where you can connect to everything. You can get our phone app there, as well as our online courses, our stocked um, online shop. Um, so check out thegardenersworkshop.com. And until we meet again, friends, ciao. Bye.